Hello YouTube, do you want badminton products at a much lower price than basically any other place? Well, check out Long Tang. They're the number one retail shop seller for genuine rackets in Hong Kong. They also offer international shipping so it doesn't matter where you are in the world. In store, they have loads and loads of accessories. They also offer stringing services in store. So just bring your racket up there because they offer great stringing. Long Tang is very very busy with like loads and loads of inquiries and just general sales. So I know some of you guys emailed them directly asking for a quote for product prices and shipping cost prices but the thing is information for some of the products is already available on the website so please could you check on the website before emailing them because like they get loads and loads of inquiries and it's hard to keep up. To find out the estimated cost of the shipping simply add your products to the shopping cart and then look at your country's name in the estimated shipping cost area. Basically, every single product has like a different shipping cost because of the different weights. The website is www.lt328.com so make sure you check them out. Also, to stay up to date with the newest racket releases and also like general news such as like restocks of rackets, make sure you become a member on their website by signing up to their mailing services. I promise you they won't spam you with like irrelevant emails. But let me just give an added note. A lot of you guys already have purchased the Astrox 88D and the S from Long Tang. And the thing is there's a lot of demand for the 88D already and it's actually completely sold out. Thing is they will restock so if you're on the mailing services you'll get the notification of when they'll restock which won't be too long so please be patient and just wait for it. And today we have the ultimate racket, the Astrox 88S. This racket is currently being used by Kevin Sanjay Asukamoljo. He's number one in the world for badminton doubles right now. Personally, as you guys might know, I prefer like more singles oriented rackets where it's slightly heavier, slightly sluggisher, but a bit more powerful. However, after using this racket, I fell in love with the speed and I don't know, I just love it, you know. I never guessed that I would like this racket so much. So also, I know you guys have a high demand for the Astrox 88D. I have in my bag right now. Um, I just got this one strong because there was like a broken grommet on it. So I got that fixed. So I tested out the Astrox 88S first. Um, however, please be expecting the 88D review to be coming out very, very soon. So make sure you smash that like button, absolutely destroy it. Get this video to 500 likes. I know that's a very, very low limit, but once we hit that limit, I'm gonna put out the review very, very quickly. So let me just tell you like my experiences with this racket. First impressions when I started playing with it. This racket is very, very light. It's very, very quick. It actually kind of reminds me of the Nano Ray series where it's like very fast, but not very powerful. But however, in this Astrox series, they literally made the racket extremely powerful despite its speed. So after you get used to like the weight of the racket, the sweet spot, the smashes with this racket is actually incredible. People are saying like, whoa, oh my gosh, your smashes are so much faster than normal. That is actually insane. And they don't realize it, this racket actually helped me out a lot. So with clays, it's very, very effortless as long as you hit the sweet spot. And by the way, I have this strung at 30 pounds of tension with the new favorite string, Ashaway Zymax 62 Fire, which has 0.62 millimeters gate. That is extremely thin compared to most strings. Most people might know the string BG65 Titanium. That string has a gauge of 0.7 millimeters, um, which is not that much thicker than this one if you think about it. But, however, in the badminton world, if your string tension is up to like 30 or like anywhere close to 30, a slight change of the gauge would mean a big difference. So, with the thinner string, I just think it gives me a bit more control, a bit more repulsion, and it just has like a tighter feel. Clears are absolutely effortless. They just explode off your racket, and it's so controlled. Like some rackets, there is a lot of power behind it, but you might not necessarily know where it's gonna hit. Whereas this one, bang! And it, I just know exactly which point on the back it's hitting. With drop shots, 
very, very, very controlled, especially this skilled edition. Um, the Astros AT&D also has a lot of control, but this one, the touch of it is a bit lighter and it's a bit quicker, so you could do those like really, really sudden quick changes of pace. Drives are amazing with this racket. It outpaces any other racket. Personally, I think this is the single fastest badminton racket for doubles in the world. Uncontested. I'm not even joking with you. With this racket, I feel like I can basically cut off anything. I can even like cut off extremely fast smashes in the front court with ease with this insanely speedy racket. Smashes, they're just incredible. Like, I never knew that this like very, very quick racket could have such a powerful smash. And by the way, there's a difference between powerful smashes and fast smashes. Fast smashes is just like, wow, very, very fast. It just moves across the court very, very quickly. However, powerful smashes have a bit of a weight behind it. So when you're returning powerful smashes, you kind of have a feel like it's trying to push your racket down. This racket somehow manages to do that despite being quick. And that's because of the rotational generator system. I'll explain that in more detail in a bit when I talk about the product technology. Smashes, they have a good steep angle because, you know, all Astrox rackets have a good angle. Um, for example, like the Astrox 77, like before st I started using it, my smashes were not as steep as I would like. But after using that racket, my smashes are getting closer and closer to the front of the court. Net shots with this skill racket, absolutely phenomenal. I feel like I'm dominating every single part of the front court. No opponent can contest me when I'm using this racket. Um, well, I mean, obviously there's players better than me, but you know, the feeling with this racket is incredible. Net shots are tight, controlled, net shots are fast, you know. Like, everything is so controlled, it's actually ridiculous. Defense with this racket, obviously amazing, you know. Very, very fast. Thing is, with the full trick series, there's a lot of power, but you might know it's a bit sluggish and the handling isn't the best. However, with the new Astro series, especially these rackets like the Astro 88S, D, and also the 77, there's a lot of power behind it. It's actually ridiculous. But defense is so much quicker than the Voltrix. Backhands, not anything special, but they're very, very good. You can generate power very, very easily to get out of sticky situations if something pushes like a really sharp lift into your back corner. Like, for example, here. Which is that boom and it just sends all the way to the back of the court there's quite good control with that as well so let's go back to my house and i'll explain to you more about this racket's amazing technology so now let's talk more about this racket the astrox 88s got released alongside with the astrox 88d so the frame of this racket is made from high modulus graphite nanometric and also tungsten also there's something new on the astrox 88s and the astrox 88d there's new flex points in the frame on the Astrox 88S, the whole frame flexes upon impact to give more shuttle hold, therefore giving you more control at the frontal core. However, on the Astrox 88D, it flexes on the midpoint of the frame to give you more power. I'll explain more about the Astrox 88D when it comes to that review. The Astrox 88S has the stiff shaft. Stiff shafts on badminton rackets tend to give a bit more control and a bit more touch. However, to generate good power, you need to have a good technique. Both the Astrox 88s have very, very slim and long shafts. This gives you a bit more whip so you can generate power very, very easily. But don't worry, it's not going to make you like lose control or something like that because of the new graphite NAMD and the new stiffness of the graphite. The shaft is made from high modulus graphite and NAMD graphite. I think you're actually meant to pronounce it as NAMD, but I don't know, it just doesn't really sound right. So I prefer to say NAMD. So the model here is the 3U G5 edition. The recommended strain tension for the 3U model is 21 to 29 pounds of tension. However, the more common 4U edition will have a recommended strain tension between 20 to 28 pounds of tension. Personally, I don't really like super light rackets considering this racket is already very, very fast. So I opted for the 3U model, which is slightly heavier than the 4U and there's just a bit more punch and power behind it. However, to those players that don't mind giving up a bit of power for a bit of extra speed and handling, just go for the 4U model. This racket is made in Japan. It says it on the shaft as well as the bottom cap. So one of the main things that distinguish this racket from other rackets is that it is five millimeters shorter than conventional rackets. So when you put the Astro 77 and the 88D next to the Astro 88S, you can see that the Astro 88S is 
Shorter by a little bit compared to the other two rackets. However, the Astrox 88D and the 77 is relatively similar. So you might say, what does five millimeters shorter do to help the racket in any way? Surely doesn't that make it just like disadvantage because you have less of a reach? Well, five millimeters isn't so drastic that it will literally handicap your reach. It's not like one of those baby rackets that you just swing here and you just completely miss the shuttle because like it is so short. What five millimeters shorter actually does is reduce the leverage when you're holding the Bantam racket to give you extra speed and a bit more control, especially in the frontal court. See, the thing is, some badminton players, when they approach the net, they like to shuffle their grip up so they're holding to a higher point. And they do that because they want to shorten the leverage so they have a quicker maneuverability. But when they get to the ring court, they will shift their hand to the back to get a bit more leverage for a bit more power. So yeah, so that's basically the idea of how it works. So this racket uses nanometric. That material is present in a lot of like high-end Yonix rackets. And basically, it is 60% thinner than conventional graphite, but it still retains its stiffness, which is really, really good. It keeps its toughness and it just makes it so much better to use. However, nanometric isn't one of those like new revolutionary things because it's been around for a bit. The new thing, well, it got introduced in the Astro 77 already. That thing is the NAMD graphite. Yonix actually gets pretty scientific when it comes to this thing, but to basically make it understandable to the average person. They basically kind of attach the nanomaterials more directly to the graphite fiber, making it a bit more tougher, a bit more powerful, and also flexes in a way that is very, very controlled. There's loads of rackets out there in the market that give you flex, but as you know, there's not a lot of control. That's why so many people normally prefer the Voltric series before because the Voltric series tends to have like very, very stiff shafts, which gives you very, very good touch and good control. NAMD is very, very revolutionary because the combination of control and power you get from this racket is just ridiculous. It surpasses so many other rackets out there. The racket head is isometric, which basically means that it is kind of like a square shape. This is done to increase the sweet spot. The isometric shape has been around for quite a long time. This racket also sports the new grommet pattern and construction. A lot of the new Yonix rackets have a different grommet pattern compared to like the old ones. And basically the grommet pattern allows for better string tension retention. That's some extreme tongue twister right there. And it also allows for more efficient energy transfer, making your racket a bit more repulsive when you hit the shot. Inside this racket, there's also something called the solid field core. This is also present in quite a lot of the rackets. What the solid field core does is reduce any like excess miscellaneous vibrations. So it leaves you with the correct vibrations for you to know like where your shuttle is going through a very, very, very good touch. Some rackets out there, well, they have a lot of power, but as soon as you hit the shuttle, it's almost like a guessing game of where it's gonna go. However, with these rackets, with the solid field core, as soon as you hit it, you can immediately know where the shuttle is going. The Astro series rackets also combine the benefits of both the aero and box frames. Please do not confuse this with the dual optimum system. The dual optimum system is present on the Duo rackets, where one side is sharper than one side light, which is a box head frame. The sharper side is meant to be for like the backhand, and the box head frame is meant to be for the forehand. However, what they did with Astrox rackets is they actually kind of merged the two frames into one, which is not very like groundbreaking, it's just like kind of standard, but it is very, very aerodynamic. This racket also has one of those new built-in T-joints. It's also around for a couple of the newly released Yonix rackets, so it's not anything extraordinarily new. It's a combination of epoxy resin, lightweight plastic, and some foaming agent. So, earlier on in the video, I said the smashes are very, very powerful and fast at the same time, which is like not very expected with like such a quick racket. I also said it's because of the rotational generator system. Okay, let me just kind of explain it to you. I know it's hard to get your head around it because I mean, it's kind of a weird concept. So traditionally, rackets like the Voltric series, when it's head heavy, it's just chunked out on the top area um, and the grip is like fairly light. This gives you good leverage, good power, but the downside is it's very, very sluggish when you're trying to defend quickly like this. So what they did with the rotational generator system is they got the racket, added weights here to the top of the frame, to the T-joint, and then to the grip. So 
This makes the racket like fairly evenly distributed in terms of the weight. And technically, this racket should be even, just like one of those like arc sabre rackets. However, the head is still actually more head heavy than the grip, making this a head heavy racket. The counterweight on the grip actually counters the weight of the head when you're defending. So when you're actually like moving this racket laterally like this to move to defend the shot, the racket feels as like a whole racket. Like it's not just like one of those Voltric rackets where the head is just being like dragged uh, by the grip. Therefore making this racket extremely quick to defend with. That's why I say it's very, very fast and speedy. However, when you're using this racket overhead and you have your racket like this, okay? The pivot point is down here and the racket moves in this kind of like motion. And since the counterweight is at the pivot point, that becomes voided and the weight of the head is allowed to kind of work. Therefore, you can still get those amazingly powerful smashes that you get with a Voltric racket, but with just extremely good handling. So some of you guys might have seen like Yonix's explanations for the rotational generator system. They actually have diagrams like they actually have diagrams and like physical models where they literally have a stick with chunked out ends and the pivot point is directly in the middle. And they say, oh, um, it's going to spin faster than the stick without the chunked out ends. Like that is pretty obvious because it's like the laws of momentum and stuff like that. But the thing is, the way they explain it is not very good because they're literally saying that you are holding the racket in the middle part. Like, are you Darth Maul? Why are you pivoting the racket like this? Like, I don't, I don't do drives or smash like this. Like, people think I have problems. So therefore, I think those models aren't very, very good for explaining it. So that's why I try to take my time and approach it in a different way to make it kind of understandable. This racket also has something called the new Energy Boost Cap. As you can see right now on this racket and my other rackets, I kind of gripped it up all the way to the top to kind of replicate the feel of like a doubles racket because you know in doubles you really want speed especially in the frontal area so you like hold your racket really high as I've addressed earlier so I gripped it up like this normally I don't really do this to my rackets but I mean I'm enjoying it so I might start doing this in the future the grip is actually kind of hiding the thing but if you look very very carefully I'm kind of using like a very very thin grip you can kind of see see like the like a little ergonomic area to rest your thumb and you might say oh my gosh that's not like a revolutionary change like it's only a little groove like that's not a deal breaker okay I know it's not a deal breaker but it does make it more enjoyable to use okay like literally I've got the 77 here that one doesn't have like the groove in it and it doesn't feel anywhere as nice as this one with, with the groove like honestly it makes it so much more enjoyable to do drives and neck kills another thing with the energy boost cap um well i'm sorry that i've gripped it up so high therefore i have to use diagrams if you look in the front area you can see that there's like a little groove and what that groove does is allow the shaft to flex forward upon impact to kind of work like the benefits of any md graphite however when you turn the racket sideways you can see there's this like little arch and what that does is stop the racket flexing sideways, which is like the wrong direction. You don't really hit the shuttlecock like this unless you really have problems. So yeah, that makes the racket a bit more stable and it makes it more controlled. So now let's just have a look at the design of this racket. I've got to say at first, I wasn't really like the biggest fan of the design. I just thought like the Astro 77 and the Astro 88D looked a lot better than the 88S. However, after using it for some time and looking at it for quite a bit, I've literally grown to like it a lot. This racket has a glossy finish and let me just say like glossy finishes tend to not last as long as like matte finishes. This racket is like predominantly emerald green and black. However, on the bottom parts, there's some like dark reds. Along the racket, you can also see like those like, I don't even know how to explain it. There's like dots, lines, rectangles, it just makes it look like very high tech you can say it like that and then if you turn it sideways you can look here there's like some kind of shiny sticker like things well they're not stickers because you can't peel them off but like, that's the best way i could really describe it on the top here it says isometric on the side it says rotational generator system and on the bottom here it says head heavy balance five millimeters long i was just so bad when i saw five millimeters long like this racket is so much longer than five millimeters i think they should say five millimeters shorter you know shorter not long 
You know what I'm saying? Okay, let's look at the shaft. On one side, you can see like the standard Astrox writing, you know, the big, bold font, Astrox 88S, very, very similar to the Astrox 88D and the 77. After the S, you can see the word skill. What they mean by skill is just like players who kind of tend to lean more to like speed shots and also like deception and like, like to control a rally with a very, very skillful shot. Very much like Kevin Sanjay Sukumojo. Players like him are more suited to the frontal court player. Whereas for the Astrox 88D, which stands for Dominate, is suitable for players like Marcus Gideon, who smashes a lot and just uses a lot of power. On the other side of the shaft, you see more of those like cool designs, like very, very high tech looking. It says NAMD, made in Japan, energy boost cap. Generally, I just think this racket is designed very, very well. And I think this grip just really, really complements the Emerald Green. And on the Astrox ATD as well, I think this grip works really well as it like kind of blends into this thingy. I know it's not like the exact same shade, but I have one like disclaimer, okay? The thing is, I don't know why, but like most of the Yonix rackets that I got, um, upon receiving it, the grips are extremely hard to remove from the wood. Um, like there's like residue and stuff like that. I spent so long peeling down the um, factory Yonix grip from the 77 and also the 88S, but then I just gave up on the 88D and you can see I just put a very, very thin Yonix Super Grab over it and there are still these grooves and stuff like that, like ribbed patterns from the old grip. But I mean, it's fine, like, it's not like a deal breaker. I, I would just prefer if Yonex didn't use as like strong of a glue. It literally feels like they put on like the world's strongest super glue to put on these grips as a prank. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and turn on my channel. Bye bye!